Carolina Castellana. This is Visions of Inspiration. Welcome to the show. Wow, that is just really, really beautiful. Um, kind of bring tears to your eyes, I think. It's very emotional. I have someone here that um, has got quite a story. He's going to share his story right now about uh, how he started uh, playing the harp and all the wonderful miracles that have uh, come behind it. So I'd like to introduce Peter Sterling. Hello. Hello. What Hello. a pleasure. Thank you. It's great to be here. How are you? Wonderful. Good. Thanks. Now, I'm going to have you share. We don't have much time. It goes by so fast. But I'm going to have you share. Where were you born? I was born in Santa Monica. Okay. Yeah, right here in, in Los Angeles. Okay. And, um, born and raised. And um, yeah, so I'm a local guy. Yeah. Now. Did you find anything special about you when you were growing up? Mm. That relates to the music? Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I, I played the piano by ear as a child. Okay. And I showed some exceptional talent as a child. I, one evening I, I sat down at the family piano in the living room when I was about six years old. Oh my goodness. And I just sat down at the piano and started playing up and down the keys and it just like came out. Uh -huh. And um, this went on for several months. And then one evening, my mother's friend came over and told me, watch me play, and said, oh, no, 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 you have to do it right. <coughs> and said that you have to take lessons to learn how to play properly. <laughs> and then I uh, immediately stopped playing, because if I couldn't play the way I wanted to play, I didn't want to play. Oh, my goodness. So then, after a while, you grew up. You were like 21 years old, or you just turned 21. What happened then? When I turned 21? Yeah. Well, I moved away from Los Angeles, actually. Okay. I, I followed a, 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 a boyhood dream of living in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado and being a ski bum. So I, <laughs> I blew out of school at USC, where I was going to college, and um, decided to take a year off from college. And I ended up in Aspen, Colorado. And that year away from school turned into 10 years. Oh, my goodness. And a, a lot of things happened to me up there. But I, I got to live a wonderful lifestyle and uh, became a ski instructor there. And, Wow. teaching skiing to celebrities and, and oh. different people like that. But I always felt there was something more for me to do, even though I had a great life. And uh -huh. uh, there was something more calling me inside. Something and I, missing, huh? Something missing. They, when I would just sit and get quiet, I would hear my inner voice tell me, Peter, there's something else for you uh -huh. here. And uh, so this one day when I was sitting up on top of the mountain overlooking the view, which oh. I, I used to love to do, uh, I heard a voice speak to me and it said, go to Sedona. Uh -huh. of all places, and wow. I didn't know much about Sedona at the time. I had heard stories of it being a, a mecca mm -hmm. for the New Age, a kind of a spiritual yeah, vortex area. That's what I've heard. So I took a trip down there, and from the first moment... You listened. Yeah, I listened to the voice, and, and through a turn of events, it's, it's really interesting. What I found is that when people start to live their passion and live their mission and live their true heart's calling, all sorts of incredible things and synchronicities and miracles start to oh, wow. to, to, to happen like to help what? them fulfill. Well, once I realized I needed to go to Sedona, uh -huh. shortly thereafter I met a man who in Aspen who had a house in Sedona uh -huh. and it was sitting vacant and he said, why don't you go down to my house? <laughs> so that's kind of what got me down there and from the first moment I drove down Oak Creek Canyon I was struck with a feeling of the, the familiarity and also with the beauty and the power and the majesty of the red rocks. It just oh, spoke my to my heart and soul, and, I, and so I knew immediately that I was going to live there. So I returned to Colorado, packed my bags, and a couple months later I made a move. Just like yeah, that? Just like that. I was ready at that point to make a move, and uh, this was very clear that's, a, that's where I was supposed to be, so that's what I did. I moved to, to Sedona, and then my, my life changed very quickly. From did that you know um, at that time what you were going to be doing? No, I had no idea. No idea? Well, one of the ideas was that I was going to move to Sedona and be, to fulfill this feeling of being an artist, that I'd always been an artist on, on mm -hmm. some level and had worked many years creating stained glass pieces. Uh, oh. And so I, I moved to Sedona thinking that I was going to do that, which I did initially. But then after a short time, I was guided by this inner voice that, no, Peter, there's something more for you. <laughs> and, this is not it, huh? <laughs> yeah. And I was guided to let go of all my material possessions. Oh, my goodness. And, and, and get a Volkswagen van, which uh -huh. I did, a camper van. And I moved it in the van, and I, I slept in the canyons out in the wilderness. And wow. that I was going on a vision quest. Uh -huh. And because this inner voice was guiding me the whole time. Wow. And it was very clear. And so I just kept listening to it and trusting. And it said to let go of everything and move into a van. I did. And, 
and I just started meditating several hours a day and just uh -huh. I just, just realized that meditation in the silence of the canyons was my calling at that time and that there was something I was going to discover by going deep into that experience which I did and uh, as I got very very quiet now that 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 time in my van the vision quest turned into three years I lived in my car <laughs> Three Sleep, years in your three car? Three years living in my car. Oh my and it wasn't easy all the time. But it was very liberating in a lot of ways. And this was before cell phones and emails and all that. <laughs> wow. So I was able to literally kind of unplug from the normal concerns of mundane uh, life and just live in kind of a uh, very kind of shamanic, visionary, uh, questing place out in the canyons. And I lived very simply didn't have much money, and so, but there was always enough just to get by to help me along how, the way. How, how did you make your money? Well, I became a, a tour guide for a, a Jeep tour company in Sedona, okay. and I took people <laughs> out onto the land, and I uh -huh. took them to the sacred sites in the vortexes. So that was the job I had back then. Oh. So I lived very close on the land. I was really into Native American spirituality and traditions and mm -hmm. immersed myself in that path. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, but as I went into the canyons, what I discovered there was this extraordinary silence there. And so I just immersed myself. And for the first time, that my, my mind was able to become very still and calm. Ooh, yeah. that's hard to do. It's hard to do. Uh, it's hard to do in the city, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> There's certain sanctuaries around the city where you can do that. But out there in the canyons, it's a pristine energy. There's no like electromagnetic disturbances or anything. So, <laughs> Plus, you're in a vortex area where the, actually the energy is very amplified. Now, there. share what that means. I'm sure a lot of people don't know what that Share means. what the vortex yes, is? Please. Um, well, there's, I mean, in a nutshell, um, it's a sacred site that's been held sacred for thousands of years by Native American people that had traveled on the, on the traditional uh, uh, trade routes. Mm -hmm. And they would always stop in Sedona. It was a place for celebrations and ceremonies and uh, prayers and vision questing. Uh -huh. And so that had been going on for thousands of years. So when I came into it, uh, that energy was already apparently there. And just the natural geography of the landscape uh, you know, accentuates the energy. Uh, there's very high content of iron in the rocks there, which is electromagnetic. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and we resonate to that because we have iron within us in our blood. So there's yeah. this resonance that happens. If you lay on the rocks and meditate on the rocks, you feel this incredible oh, energy. Goodness. And it can be very healing and very balancing for people when they go there. People have quite traumatic experiences. So you picked up a lot of positive energy there. There was a lot of positive energy there. And it was just very uplifting. It was like living in a higher frequency. Uh -huh. You know, here in the city, for instance, there's a energy here that kind of holds us in that urban city <laughs> energy. But out there, it's a completely uh, different kind of energy. Uh -huh. And people often have psychic experiences. It opens up their clairvoyance. and telepathy, people start channeling all sorts of things. Did that, that happen to you? Well, that's what happened to me. Basically, I, I, w I went into the silence and I would meditate several hours a day from several times a day, mm -hmm. whenever I could, and, um, <clears throat> and I would hike out into the wilderness and just explore the wilderness by myself, and, and I'd find a special place to sit and meditate in the quiet. Well, I had one experience was I got quieter and quieter. All of a sudden, this one time, was that all of a sudden I perceived music. Like mm -hmm. when I got very quiet, all of a sudden I heard the faint strains and the faint sounds of some sort of beautiful music. At first I opened my eyes and looked around, mm -hmm. thought maybe somebody was out there in the forest that was playing a portable stereo. <laughs> but then I realized, no, that's not where it's, co it's coming from within me. Wow. And so I just, this inner voice was speaking to me and said, just, just connect into it, tune into it. And the more that I tuned into it, the louder it, it got. Eventually, uh, it, was, it felt like it was some sort of angelic music. Mm. And then I was guided by this inner voice, this guiding yeah. spirit, to completely surrender and allow the music to take me. And when I did that, as I was sitting there meditating, hearing this beautiful music, I was literally lifted out of myself, kind of floated right out of my body. A real dramatic wow. out-of-body experience. Yeah. Wow. And to my astonishment... No drugs, right? No drugs. <laughs> well, you know, that's a whole other story. But... <laughs> but uh, you know, when you're on the shamanic path, like in traditional shamanic cultures, there are certain sacraments that people use to expand the awareness, to have visions. Mm -hmm. So I experimented with some of that, and, you know, and it was all very valuable. Um, but, but this came very naturally just from sitting in the, in the silence, and there was this opening that occurred. And I, I call it my third ear open, simultaneous to 
simultaneously to my, my third eye as I was focusing a lot of my meditations here to open up my clairvoyance, uh -huh. my clairaudience opened up where I could hear. <laughs> I could hear the inner music. So as I surrendered and let go to the sound, when I floated out of myself, uh -huh. above myself, and I looked in my inner vision, to my astonishment, there were angels there waiting to greet me. Wow. And as I, I oh, it was extraordinary. It was, at first it was kind of terrifying and frightening because it was, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. But indeed it was true. And um, there were these angels there. And they were looking at me and I was looking at them. And what I noticed, they were playing harps and flutes and violins and this music that I was hearing, they were making. Oh my goodness. It was a very mystical transcendent uh, wow. experience that I didn't share with a lot of people. I kept it very personal and private to myself for a long time. But these, once I made that connection, the angels, we just started hanging out quite a bit. And um, they revealed to me, because we were able to develop a communication link up, uh -huh. where I was able to communicate with them telepathically. Wow. Because the angels don't necessarily speak words. They communicate pure thoughts in the dimension that they live in. Oh, uh -huh. okay. So, so I was able to link up, because I was coexisting in that frequency uh -huh. with them, and that's how I made the telepathic and clairvoyant link up with them. So the voice that you said you kept hearing mm -hmm. now, whose voice was that? Um, you know, I'm not sure. Um, could it have been God? It could have been God. I think it could have been my higher self uh -huh. at times. It could have been some spirit guides that I had with me. It could have been... Uh, I had a grandmother who was a mystic and a meditator as oh. I was growing up, and she would always tell me, Peter, listen to your inner voice as I was uh -huh. a child growing up. Constantly would drill that into me, listen to your inner voice, uh -huh. listen to your inner voice. So ever since I was young, I was always listening. We all have an inner voice, you know, it's like the conscience or the higher self. Yeah. So I just um, attuned myself to that and refined that, that listening capability where mm -hmm. I could hear the inner voice, and it just was guiding me because I was always on a spiritual uh, journey, a spiritual search. Uh -huh. uh, that's just the way I've always been ever since I was a, a teen. So, um, and then the angels came in like that and they revealed to me that my mission, because leading up to that point I was asking for what my spiritual mission was because I knew that in this lifetime that I was here to help. Uh -huh. I knew that I was a light worker, uh -huh. uh, if you're familiar <clears throat> with that term, and I knew that I was here to be of service and to help with the um, transformation that was sweeping the planet and then people were waking up all over and that we realized that there was some sort of spiritual renaissance which was occurring to help uh, steer the humanity away from the doom and gloom of what was we were looking at <laughs> to try to create some sort of alternative vision, a spiritual vision where we could create heaven on earth. Wow. And so that's what I wanted to be a part of. That's quite a journey you were put on. It was a real journey. It was scary. It was yeah. unnerving. It was very uncertain at times. But, you know, here I am today and I think I made it okay. Now, I hear that your your music has been a healing. Um, you know, it's healed people. Many people. Can you share some of those sure, stories? Sure, sure. I mean, I have many letters that I've received from people from all over the world that share their stories of healing and inspiration and miracles wow. that happen. And um, I think one of the um, one of the characteristics or the qualities of the music that contributes to that experience is. Uh, a couple of years ago, my music was studied at Arizona State University mm -hmm. by a PhD, oh. excuse me, a brain scientist. Uh -huh. And they did some brain mapping with different types of music where they hook uh, uh, somebody's brain up with electrodes and measure their brainwave states. So oh. they did a study with different music and they found that my music creates a theta brainwave state, mm -hmm. which is within moments the listener entrains to theta, which is the meditative state also known as the twilight state, which wow. creates a visionary, lucid, dreaming kind of state um, of awareness, even while you're awake. Mm. So, and that's a state that people um, want to achieve during meditation, but a lot of us have a hard time meditating and can never really quite get into theta. So the music is a tool to help stabilize the brainwaves in a theta, and then when you get there, then all of a sudden you, the nervous system can kind of recalibrate itself uh, stress is, re is relieved, and so healing can take place. Whoa. And not only that, but theta opens up the clairvoyance and the kind of the psychic uh, vision as well. Oh so goodness. that contributes to all the visions uh, that people have had. A lot of people have written me that they, they put the music on and start playing my CDs in their house, and they start seeing angels in their home. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah it's a very common experience. I'm pick some CDs up. Yeah, from because me. the music <laughs> resonates and vibrates in that frequency. So, and that's where it came from. 
So the music acts in two ways. It's, it, by playing it in your space, it opens portals, dimensional portals, where if you meditate with it, uh -huh. which is what the angels told me, is that you can travel on the sound wow. in your meditation and it will take you places. And also, it, it's like an angelic attractor where if you, you play it in the space, it just, the angels are attracted to it. So the next thing you know, you've got a house full of angels. <laughs> I take no responsibility for that, so <laughs> use it at your, your own risk. Oh, uh, well, the heart does look like a shape of a, of a, a wing. It's of like an a wing, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's uh, one of the, the qualities of it that contributes to its heavenly sound. Yeah. How have you accepted all of this... Um, I don't know, would you call it success? Would you call it uh, your quest? Would you, call, would you call it all of this that has been happening to you? I'd call it a miracle, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, um, you know, I'm just, I live in the moment for the most part, and I just, I'm always constantly tuning into the moment and to that higher guidance to direct me in my life. And when you live your place from that, from the power of now, and go forth from that power point of the present moment, life takes on a whole new orientation. Uh, we're not constantly living in the future, and we're, we're not living in the past. Most of us are oscillating from the past to the future all the time. Yeah, we're never living in the present. Right, we're, we're afraid of what the future might bring, uh -huh. and we, we, we think, remember the past of what happened in the past, and we project that in the future. So I would have never been able to do what I've done now if I was doing that. So through my meditation and martial arts training, I just was able to really hone in on the present moment, and then with the angels' help and positive thoughts and prayers that all sorts of magic can happen. I think when you move into that state of consciousness, it's uh -huh. like you're existing, what I call, you're uh, in miracle-mindedness. And so it's like a whole new frequency you're in, and then synchronicities and miracles just start to happen. Manifesting just happens very quickly. If, you know, There's many people who share their stories when they start living from that place. It's like, uh, what I call, what I see, it's like when grace descends. You you're come out of the normal status quo consciousness and you're in a whole new realm of unlimited possibilities. Wow. How does that feel to you, Peter, everything you've accomplished? Well, it's very satisfying. There's still more I want to do and the angels like, have a lot more. Like what? Uh, we want to reach more people. We want it, They want it to go out bigger because, you know, things are, at this time, uh, change is even accelerating, the quickening is happening, more uh -huh. and more people are awakening, and, uh, and then also on the same page we see all sorts of things that are unpleasant in the world, that yeah. are frightening, uh, the, f the future seems to be very uncertain in some ways, yet we're having the spiritual awakening around the planet, so it's quite a polarity with yeah. that, Qu quite a contradiction, so um, we I want to be a part, and the angels with this music want to be a bigger part of what's unfolding on the planet, and, and that's what they have in store. So I'm just showing up. I just keep showing up, and they keep opening doors. And uh, yeah, so are you still cool. living in your van? No, no, the van, the van went to its demise some years ago. The angels took it away from me in a car fire. It actually burned up in a flame. Are you sure you didn't start the fire? <laughs> no, I didn't do it. <laughs> uh, so. Now things are getting better for you. You're feeling more comfortable. You're adjusting to everything that that you're you're being given. All the miracles you're being given, you know, because playing the harp, all of a sudden you just knew how to play it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well, when the when the angels came through and they told me that my mission was to play the harp, at first I was taken aback by that heavenly request. I wasn't a musician at the time. I really didn't know much about music, although I, I felt music in my heart and soul mm -hmm. for my whole life and had searched through different instruments trying to find the right instrument. But when the angels came and told me that uh, I was to play the harp, at first I kind of balked at that idea. I said, no, 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 no I want an electric guitar. <laughs> but they said, no, no, rock and roll is another lifetime for you. This time we're gonna you're gonna bring through some celestial music on the harp, and uh -huh. they said that if I was willing to do this, that they would teach me how to play, and that together we would work as a team, like co-creating this experience. And so uh -huh. that's what happened. I I finally just could not uh, say no anymore. It was very uh -huh. clear that this was, was reality, and so I said yes, I will do it. And uh, as soon as I said yes, all sorts of things started happening. Within a week, I met a woman who was a harpist. And I told her that I was feeling drawn to the instrument, and uh -huh. she said she had a small harp for sale at her home, if I'd like to come over and try it. 
uh -huh. I could, and so I did. And from the first moment I put my hands on the strings, an energy came through me where my hands actually moved on the strings wow. by themselves. And at first it was quite terrifying and scary, but I took the harp and I, it had a small carrying case, and I yeah. took it with me and put it in my van and went out to the forest. And it was smaller than this one? Yes, much smaller, about a lap harp oh. that could sit in my lap right here, and oh. I very portable. It had a carrying case. I could sling it over my shoulder, uh -huh. and I could uh, hike back into the canyons and find a magic place and take out my harp, put my hands into the string, and all of a sudden my hands would just start playing wow. by themselves. It was, uh, like I said, it was, it was terrifying at times, but it was full of the most incredible sensation of love That's and, and bliss ask. and total connection. And, you know, the, I sensed the angels were all around me. And uh, at first when I would play, my hands would shake uncontrollably like this. Really? My eyes would tear profusely. And I would get so hot that beads of sweat would just start pouring down my forehead. It was very hot, very intense energy. And so I had to prepare myself for that because I did a lot of healing work on myself leading up to that moment so I could handle the higher energy coming through my body. Wow. When I looked back on it over the years, what I discovered that there was one angel in particular that would at first would kind of overshadow me and uh -huh. fly above me and kind of merge with my energy field. Mm -hmm. And I could sense um, intuitively the subtle energetic impulses radiating from this angelic being that was my teacher. Yeah. And eventually, as I got more comfortable with it, this angel would actually come completely in my body and I would go into like a trance. Wow. And then I would be playing and that's how I learned to play. Wow. And um, 10 months later, I made my first recording, which went on to get discovered by a small independent record label that released it internationally for me. And three months after it was released, it was nominated for String Album of the Year in 1994. We gotta go. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Great Peter. To be here. Thank um, you. We're gonna have you on the second part, so don't take off on me, okay? All right. <laughs> this is Carolina, Visions of Inspiration. God bless all of you and God bless our troops and tune in for the second part. Goodbye.